Hey guys, welcome to Amateur Decorating Like a Pro. I am Catherine. I'm sitting here waiting for a Zoom call and the thoughts in my head are just based upon the previous jobs that I have been working on and I decided to just pop on and just share those with you. Today is going to be a bit of a blog. Yes, there are DIYs, but as you guys know, I do other projects beyond DIYs that require me to be away from the camera. And I mentioned to you guys before, when I work with a client, I don't necessarily I have the opportunity to film everything. I do respect their confidentiality and their trust in me, and I move in good faith. So if they don't want it filmed, I am not going to film it. So I'm working with someone who moved into a new home, um, hasn't had time to unpack, nor did she do a cleanup before she left. She ended up bringing everything with her because of her job. So there are opportunities to purge from that perspective. Also working along with people who are moving into a new home. For instance, a couple who is moving from both of their individual homes into a new home and they will be celebrating a wedding as well as the coming together into their new house. So all things being considered, I I am a home organizer, home manager, purger, and I am only on a referral basis. And it is also based upon my discretion to take on a project, etc. And I say all that to, to say this because I don't want you guys thinking that this is solely um, something I'm out to take to the next level. These are things that I get referrals on and then I move in that direction based upon um, how I feel about them and time that I have available. So um, that's where I am right now. So I wanted to just pop on and just, I was thinking about the habits of purging for both of these two scenarios and I decided to share those with you. Purging is really the idea of just getting things out of your home, just getting rid of things that are not functioning and taking up space to summarize it and keep it very simple. Things that are just cluttering up spaces. Most of us enjoy the liberation of moving through our spaces freely. And for some reason, something may have happened in our lives that triggered um, the ability to just keep things and adding to them. And so let's not take that lightly about people who have this as an illness that they can't let things to go. I do work along with some people who are widows and they say, you know, I want I want to use your services and they can say that sometimes uh, shortly after the funeral, but they say it's going to take some time and if they don't say it's going to take them some time, I say it's going to take you some time and wait about a year, a year and a half to 2 years based upon how I feel that you are functioning. If you are a person that is basically um, still in mourning, I'm not going to push you to move a single glass, fork, spoon, or knife or out of your home. You are still mourning and I'm not going to encourage you to do anything. And I suggest siblings don't do that as well, unless they are going to be in the home with that family member or take them into their home. I do not suggest that they encourage that person to get rid of things. Now, I am not a professional organizer, purger, decorator, or anything like that, but I've lived long enough to know when there are things that people are sentimental about. Sorry, my mouth is getting dry. But when I find that someone is just sentimental about their belongings, it is their right to be sentimental about those belongings because I don't want to trigger anything, anything in that person for a mental breakdown or any kind of anxiety attack. So it's very important to honor that about the homes that I go into. With COVID, that is to be considered as well. When um, with COVID closing down doors, and things like that and limiting the availability to go into homes. I'm not pushing that guideline in any way, form or fashion. Most of the homes that I will consider working within will definitely make sure that these people have been vaccinated and also um, thoroughly clean your places before because it still needs to be a clean house whether you are purging or not. Now where I come into play is a lot of people will say, hey, I got a lot of my mom's stuff and I don't know if I want to keep it or not. None of my siblings want it. And can you tell me if this is something that I even should consider taking into my new space? 
I love those kinds of visits because they're quick and easy and basically pain free for the person because of their mindset and where their thought process is. They're open to letting things go. That's very important to consider. Um, do you Have you already selected your new place? And if you want me to see it, that's fine. And I can tell you where you could use that particular piece of furniture and things like that. If you're going to just keep the furniture or, or either, you know, add it to a, a room, like maybe it's a china cabinet or something like that. And a lot of people have china cabinets based upon what mom and dad had from the 70s and 80s. So, um, bathrooms are huge now i mean they may be 20 by 15 they're just huge people see their bathrooms more as a place for a spa a retreat and i love that so keep in mind that you might have a large blank wall in these huge bathrooms that is where you can use a china cabinet Yes, take your beautiful towels. Can you imagine a china cabinet painted all black, painted all white, or just stripped down to the wood and lightly stained to that natural wood finish? Change out the hardware and stacking in your beautiful white towels. And on the very bottom, adding in containers and labeling them, whether it's shampoo or hair products. And those things are not cluttering up your cabinets, your kitchen, your bathroom bathroom counters and things like that. It would be beautiful. And then lighting up those glass shelves to see your towels there. Oh my God, how much luxury does that add to a large bathroom? It would be beautiful. So you think about using uh, things in spaces uh, like that. Um, the other thing are benches and chairs and things like that. And you always say like chairs, um, yeah, you want to have enough for seating of at least eight to 12 people in your home. But anything more than that, unless you are a frequent entertainer, you really don't need that many chairs. I'm talking about regular chairs, like chairs that fit to a dining room table floating around your home, especially for a household of two people. Um, if you don't have a storage space, like a lot of people don't have full basements and attics anymore that you can walk into because they are making all of their spaces livable spaces. So these spaces are being walled out and everything, whether they're open or either separated out, these spaces are being separated or planned to be used by the new homeowner. So it's very important that there's limited things to put in storage in spaces. And the more you store, the more you're going to want to store, you know, so don't, don't do that. That's another way you can consider purge, open out all of your spaces, tell the builder, listen, go ahead and uh, go ahead and uh, sheetrock out this whole wall. We just want it to the point where we want the paint color on and the room left empty. And we might come back and add walls later. I'd they take that as far as you can take it so that you'll more than likely use that space very quickly, whether it's a game room or men's cave or either your craft area for it now until kids start to come into the family. The other thing is if you have kids and they're growing up, guys, and kids are growing up so fast and getting out of the house, baby clothes, baby clothes galore, what we are finding, what I'm finding. And if you keeping the infant toddler photos from the first Olin Mill photos from back in the day, guys, it is time to let the clothes go. The kids hated those outfits and they certainly don't want you hanging on to them so you can put their kids into them. They want those outfits to be gone. You know, the outfits with those large Quaker style collars on them that you see in a lot of homes hanging up over the couch. Yeah, the kids want those photos gone. On. Yeah, they do. But uh, depending on the mindset of the owner and also where she or he is going to transition to, you want to consider purging the photos. For old photos and old photo albums, this is the perfect time to get those things separated out. Even the photo albums are disintegrating in some of the homes uh, that I've seen. So you want to go ahead and separate the photos out, put them in a separate divided container by name. And you might want to consider that service where you can send those off and have those archived into one catalog on the device. So much easier than having them to just fade away, curl up along the edges, and you're never ever going to see them again. And your plans of sharing them at the next family reunion when hardly anybody can even see what they look like because they're in just that bad of a condition. 
So consider that um, as, as an option um, when you're doing your purge. Um, the thing I really do embark upon more so than ever lately is relationships, things with relationships from the past. If you are getting ready to get married or start a new relationship, you're moving into one location. You do not need to have pictures of you with somebody else. They just don't. It's just the memory. If you, if it was that good, you would have still been there. Let it go. Okay? Let it go. It's toxic to take that into a new relationship. It's just like keeping the pictures on your phone. You need to purge. You need to let that go. Same difference with him. Now, I was given permission to share this from this weekend's client. It was a two-day purge at one house both of them they're planning to get married he's purging she's purging and they both are very open about the purging process as well as marriage counseling and all of that above so they want their minds to be very clear for new beginnings and they are getting rid of things and pictures photo albums Things associated with vacations, honeymoons, and all of the fun time that those two had together. Not just, not the photos with the kids, but the photos of just those two together. They're gone. They are tossing. They are purging. Now, there were family photos with the kids, and the kids like, like those pictures of the parents, and they want to keep that. Guess what? Those are near the kids. They're in their kids' room but they are not near them. Near them, They are not going to be sitting around the house or on a mantle or anything like that. And the kids, in one instance, there's a little album that one of the kids has with their parents and them together. That's acceptable. But to have the full uh, 11 by 17 of mommy and daddy at the wedding hanging up in the living room from the two spouses, eh, that is not a good idea. That is not the welcome thing in the foyer that you want to have. You want to purge. Now, you don't want to hurt your kids' feeling by taking mommy's photos away or daddy's photo away. You do not want to do that because it also stabilizes the growth between the relationship with you as you grow into your new relationship. But the intimate photos and things like that with you and that person, make sure that you purge. And if you don't have the strength and you know you want to let it go and I'm there as your purger, trust me, I will be glad to shred them for you or drive them away to the nearest shredder for you. Another project that you want to consider doing in the purging process is a separation of projects, guys. You want to have your trash, you want to have your donate, you want to have your sale category. Even if you have those separated in the garage and a simple sign by zone, put it here, put it there, and tell the kids to get involved in it. Because if you're going to sell it, you need to, Facebook Marketplace is a great place to do it if you've never sold anything before. You need to plan it out there and give yourself seven days. That's over the span of a week and people can see it within seven days. And of course, considering over the weekend for that item to sell, people tend to sit down and relax when they're off from work and then they get back with you as soon as possible. But allow them, hey, I have this item, it is for sale, must be sold by this day. And if they agreed that they want to get it you set a deadline if they do not then you have to make a decision an executive decision to let that item go you don't renegotiate come back come back come back the sooner you get rid the sooner you purge the sooner you're liberated the space and your home and your transition to move in the new space i found this um chart here on pinterest by serve pro and it has been a beacon of light to help me explain uh, the direction to clients and declutter your home using five box methods red box the keep keep items you need or use regularly or that you have space for that's where a lot of people come into a challenge because they think that they have space for everything as long as they can just simply get into the room hey it's fine i can walk in here why can't you and when when you try to convince them that you really don't have space for this because you are not able to function 
normally then you know someone else coming in from the outside seems to have more influence I'll, I'll tell you that honestly than a family member because they feel like the family member is just trying to get their way and then once you start to show them how liberated they can be gradually based upon whatever stage they may be whether it's grieving or whether it's just in financial recovery or emotional recovery from anything they'll grasp the concept at least to donate donate items that are in good condition or that are worth giving to other people like to a charity or goodwill um, i love donating now to our local hospice because they in turn will turn around and help people who have lost their home, who are basically trying to rebuild or reestablish themselves and working with other local charities who assist people with housing. Hospice will allow you know you to come in and get things to help furnish that home. So I love hospice for that. Selling items at a garage sale, yard sales are still popular. Um, however, for me, I just prefer not to do that. It just takes more time and energy for me personally, and I just don't have that time to do that. I would rather give it to someone, have them commit to coming and picking it up by that timeline. And then honestly, I'm a stickler for this. If you don't meet that timeline, I will just go ahead and donate it. And we have people that kind of ride around neighborhoods and looking for things that people have put out that are quality, whether they're going to take it to flea market or not. And if you put it out there and overnight and see that it's not picked up, then you take it directly to a donation center like hospice. So, um, yeah, so there are other alternatives to selling things. And then, of course, you store items that you use that you don't use regularly, but you can't part with. And those are the sentimental things. So only keep what you have that is available to have storage uh, space for. You know, that's what I do. I mean, Christmas is now coming out of my attic and going into the garage and I am purging a Christmas. So I can't promise if you guys will ever see the peacock decorations in a large scale again because I want to purge and get rid of a lot of this stuff this fall so as I'm decorating for Christmas I'm donating Christmas and Christmas is going to come a little bit earlier you know how we are on social media we have to start early so we can have a normal life during the holiday season and of course trash that which does not meet selling or donating standards we do not just donate trash to these donation centers think in terms of the recipient and i don't know what their needs could be but i would like to be respectable being the victim of a house fire before i would like to receive something that is in good condition and that is clean wash it prior to donating care about it prior to donating honor the people that you're giving it to with respect and dignity old curtains, old bed linen, old things from the previous marriages, you definitely need to let go. Old bedroom sets, consider letting those go. I know that could be a little personable to some people, but you might want to consider that. And in today's um, environment, I'm finding that it's a whole lot easier for people to do that. You know, I don't even want the bed. I don't even want the dresser. I don't even want the towels. I, I don't want anything from that. They're letting go. They are certainly letting go, and I find that very liberating. Um, other things, bathroom items, old colognes, old uh, shampoos you bought once. You thought you were going to do your hair that way. You you know, hey, but you kept it anyway, and you thought you tried again. You didn't purge, 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 purge. Get rid of this stuff. I'm not a big... Um, perfume collector I, because of the work that I do I sweat and a lot of times when I'm working on DIYs the environment gets a little warm and I sweat but I love pretty fragrances I wear perfume I love it I sleep in perfume I like smelling pretty when I go to sleep and my perfume collection is very small it's in a cool dark place I keep it under the sink um excessive anything from cookware you're, you're merging the two homes together if he has five sets of Calphalon and you have tea fall and then what are you going to do I mean there's only going to be two of you in the kitchen how often are you going to use it you decide based upon frequency of use
that's how you decide and quality of, of course now if yours is a little bit better quality than his i'm a big Cafalon fan i must say that so um if i think mine is a little bit better quality then i'm gonna probably hang on to it but you agree to disagree you may Cafalon this you may t fall the skillet you may keep the stock pot of the, of the Cafalon. so you guys negotiate on that but again the purging stack is the purging stack before i leave your home the purge has already taken place and we drive it away. We drive it away. You also want to call your people that you are going to donate these items to, like Goodville, the Salvation Army. They may have special guidelines in place because of COVID where they say, hey, listen, we're not taking certain things anymore like bedding. We might, we're not taking pillows or anything like that, which we should be smart about and know better that we are not going to take certain things over to these places. Um, the last delivery in this weekend that we made to Goodwill, the supervisor came out and said, wait a minute, we have to refuse some of this. I'll have to look it over. And then he looked really at a glance because we had to actually organized a delivery. He goes, okay, we'll go ahead and take it all. But the baby seats we don't want to take because we don't want to be liable for the baby seat. We're not sure if they are safe. Isn't that interesting? You didn't know that, did you? I didn't. I thought if you took them over and, you know, they were taking basically pretty much anything, but I don't like donating pillows and stuff like that. I just don't. So, but I learned that this weekend. So please keep that in mind. I know Habitat for Humanity has not resumed pickup in a lot of cases, but you can drop off, but they still have some things that they may be refusing. And they never did take electronics. I don't think they did, but do uh, consider what people are taking and don't inconvenience them. Let's talk about the sanitation department, please, because um, in my neighborhood and in several places that I have lived, the supervisor rides around in the morning and they scout what trash has been put out from the previous day. They radio back so they know what trucks to send to your neighborhood regular trash pickup also uh, box pickup or recycle pickup those things come at different times in my neighborhood as they did in the past so you keep in mind you don't just put it out on the street because you're purging and then you get mad because they didn't come and pick it up and now you want to report somebody no you don't do that that's just what I said no you don't do that you don't report people that way for trying to do their job in an orderly fashion what you do is find out their guidelines so my little supervisor he comes around early in the morning I see him out there at 6 30 7 o'clock driving around and then the trash pickup takes place about 10 and then about 1 o'clock the guy comes through to pick up recycles and then the box guy comes along if you've got branches and whatever out there from your yard pickup bags of leaves or whatever that guy comes around and sometimes based upon the quantity in the neighborhood they could be one in the same with the trash if it's in a bag and they will not take boxes unless they are broken down so you keep all of that in mind when you are planning your purge and don't just assume because you put it out on the street that people are going to get it. Respect the process. Please respect the process. Um, also, if you have heavy items that are made of metal and like swing sets and stuff like that, you may have to plan on taking those to a particular site because they are metals and the sanitation department may not pick those up in several cases, putting out couches and mattresses and things like that. That may not be the case in your neighborhood and Habitat, Goodwill, all of those places, Salvation Army, they may not be sending people out. And in a lot of cases in cities, they are not sending people, period. Period. You are the one that has to be responsible. In some cases, you can schedule an open top of your own. If you schedule an open top, open top in my neighborhood, let me tell you, everybody and their mama is going to come out and put something in that open top overnight. And you're going to go out there the next morning. It is going to be full because they're like, oh yeah, there's an open top in the neighborhood. So you think about that about how to discard things that you don't want anymore and um, how to basically respect the whole sanitation process. Um, make sure that you get the kids involved at a certain point. But if you're purging your child's room and he is nine or 11 or in that age 
age range, let me just tell you, don't get them involved in discarding the toys. Do not, because everything is still sentimental to them at that point, okay? All of the stuffed animals, they are going to want to hang on to dear for dear life. And don't expect for goodwill to embrace all of that. Also with the stuffed animals, that's like a pillow to them. So you might just want to do that when they're at school and when they come home, you know, they just see a nice clean room and you focus more on the future with them and telling them about the direction that you're going in and in their new room, in their new space. You know, they're going to have this, keep everything positive and uplifting because if you start getting them involved in that whole process, it's going to slow it down and you are not going to get anything done, anything at all. Think about how you're going to use your kitchen. Are you going to entertain? Are you currently an entertainer? Are you and your new spouse going to entertain more? Does he like to entertain and you're going to get into it because he is or vice versa. Now when it comes to entertaining, a lot of young couples want to entertain more after COVID and that's going to probably launch a whole entertaining uh, area in your kitchen. Keep that in mind as you are moving into your new spaces and you are purging. Um, I had uh, the client this weekend, she had so many platters guys, so many platters, some glass, some crystal and some, a lot of Dollar Tree ones. She said, she would say, I don't know if I need it or not. So I would just stop by the way because the Dollar Tree is like near my neighborhood and it's a new one and it's got all the nice stuff and she would pick it up. So keep that in mind. If you are going to be in an entertaining person, you probably already have a lot of stuff. So you don't automatically stop by the Dollar Tree. I have a little closet downstairs and everything kind of hangs on this little rack behind the door. So if we were to do a small graduation gathering for my son, guess what? I have everything I need, including napkins, everything. All I need to get is food. How relaxing is that thought process for her now? She had so much stuff. We put it in one cabinet with two doors on it. And she was like, oh my God, I don't have to do anything. All I need to get is food. How eye-opening with all of this just put together. Some things we did leave in boxes because they were glass and for the packers to come, they wouldn't have to wrap those in bubble wrap or foam because they were already now wrapped up and it was so much easier to leave those that way. But think about transitioning uh, with COVID, house sales are through the roof in Atlanta. People, you know, if one goes in the market, it's a bidding war. It's like that in my neighborhood. You can say house for sale right now, you get five bids within 30 minutes. And it's just that fast. And then the moves and the closings are just that fast as well. So purging has to go, it has to go very, very quickly. But I say all this to say that um, we find a strategy. If I'm involved, and this is not a marketing uh, in any way, form or fashion, but I give myself two days in a house. I give myself two days starting at nine o'clock, eight o'clock in the morning. And we go through, we label, we label, and we take away. When we fill up the truck or the van or whatever we're using, the U-Haul, we go and take it for donation. We go and take it for disposal. We go and get rid of it. We're not going to agonize over it. I put my client in a room this past weekend and put her papers in there that she'd had from back from her first condo when she graduated from college and she had all this paper. Oh my God, these are my closing papers on my first condo and I've sold that house 15 years ago. Oh my God, I did this, da, da, da. We separated files for taxes. I mean, you want to keep your tax records, I say seven to 10 years based upon your status, whether you went from single to married or whether you got married and then that was divorced because you never know what the spouse may be doing is tax wise he gets audited and suddenly it flips to you and it, some things can happen there but you never you always need to keep things together if you're now taking over your mom's taxes uh, based upon her status or his status as a parent and you have now resume assumed their responsibilities you definitely need to keep these taxes in a separate container broken down by that family member's name so in the event something does kind of jump off, you are ready and you have those records um, with all of that. Don't start throwing away anything associated with the IRS. Do not do that. That's not what the purge is all about. And I do not go through your confidential papers at all. I will put you in a room with them and tell you here's where you can put them. And then once we're done with that container, then you put it where you want it to be. And I'm not going to touch that at all. But that's one of the things that I do, guys. And I just, again, I'm on a referral basis. I don't jump in anyone's business. I don't want to know 
anything like that. Um, if you have things that you have been purging and you want to let go of that are personable to you, I have you purge with a shredder and we get this stuff done. And um, I still get <laughs> these text messages. I would have never done the stuff that without you. I would have never gotten rid of this without you. And I feel so much better. I'm getting ready to take a trip. I'm getting ready to do this. I'm so liberated. I'm getting ready to live my life. Thank you. Thank you. And I love that. It's all about liberation, guys. So that's it for me. I just wanted to share with you the journey that I take um, with people and in helping them to reinvent um, their thought process and to move forward. I want to thank you so much for stopping by and listening to me do a little banter today. And um, got to get back to work. I guess that Zoom call is not going to happen today. Thanks a lot for watching. As always, stay in prayer. Stay creative. Bye.